Don't come near me. Grandma smells like old people. When Hannah returned from school, she stomped off to her room, suddenly throwing things around and banging on the walls. Hannah, why are you so angry? Did something unpleasant happen at school? Concerned, I peeked into her room, just as she was about to throw the alarm clock at me. Since losing her parents, Hannah had closed her heart to us, and she had stopped smiling. Enough. Stop it. Shut up. Shut up. Screaming, Hannah pushed past me and my husband, who were blocking the doorway, and ran out of the house. On the third day after she ran away, I spotted Hannah walking with a friend in the shopping mall. I can't replace her lost parents. But if only we could connect a little more. Feeling it might be my last chance to face Hannah, I swallowed hard and approached her. That was when it happened. My grandma is the best in the world. I'm proud of her. What? Realizing Hannah's feelings, tears began to flow. My name is Susan, I'm 55 years old. I work part-time at a local seafood processing company, living with my husband, a government employee. Our only son, Tony, had already moved out and started his own family. Tony and his family are coming back here for the Easter holiday this year, I told my husband. His eyes lit up. Really? That's exciting. I can't wait to see Hannah. Hannah is Tony's child, our only grandchild. The annual New Year and the Easter visits from our son's family were our greatest joy. And that year, during the Easter holiday, the Tony family came to our house as usual. Hi, Grandma, said Hannah, now seven, as she hopped out of the car and hugged me energetically. You've grown so much since I last saw you. Grandma, let's play a lot. As Hannah was about to dash inside, she kicked off her shoes, Hannah. Make sure to line up your shoes, her mother Linda promptly scolded. A bit crestfallen, Hannah returned and lined up her shoes properly, saying, OK, as her mother had instructed. Grandma, let's play cards. Even after being scolded, Hannah quickly cheered up, reclaiming her usual smile. Linda, usually a gentle person, was strict about manners. During a trip to the supermarket with Linda and Hannah, standing in front of a crepe stall, Hannah grabbed both of my hands, pleading, Grandma, I want a crepe. No. If you eat a crepe now, you'll be too full for dinner, Linda frowned in disapproval. Stingy. Just a little bit should be fine. Right, just a little should be okay. As I inadvertently sided with Hannah. Please don't spoil her, Linda said sternly, like a schoolteacher scolding a little child, and headed into the supermarket. Oh dear, got scolded, I stuck out my tongue and laughed. Hannah laughed too, saying, we both got scolded, huh? The next morning, Linda's voice bellowed throughout the house, get up. How long are you going to sleep? No. Just five more minutes. Hearing Hannah's complaining, I couldn't help but chuckle. Tony used to be just like that. My husband laughed, reminiscing about our son's elementary school days. Wake up, Hannah. Emily is here, Linda called out. Emily is a girl who lives next door, and she's the same age as Hannah. She always comes over to play with Hannah. Hannah, let's go do the morning exercises, Emily suggested. Finally, Hannah got out of bed. Hannah and Emily are really close friends, and that night they even had dinner together. Linda made her homemade hamburgers. Hannah, these hamburgers are delicious. Right? Mom's cooking is the best in the world. Hannah said proudly, as if she had cooked them herself. The fun time spent with my granddaughter flew by, and we reached the morning of the third day. Do we really have to go back? I wanted to play more with Emily and Grandma, Hannah cried, regretting the impending separation. Don't be selfish. Dad has to work tomorrow, and we need to go back today. I don't wanna. I want to live here with Grandma forever. As Hannah clung to my waist and refused to get into the car, Linda sighed. By saying that, you're making Grandma worry too. Once we're back, you can play with your friends there. How about we have stew tonight? Let's do that. Linda managed to persuade Hannah and got her into the car. Then, bye-bye. Bye, Emily. 
By grandma. By grandpa. We'll see each other again at New Year's. I encouraged her, waving goodbye as she cried. About two hours after our son's family left, my husband called me at work, and I had a bad feeling. What's wrong? Did something happen? Well, there was a call in my office. My husband seemed unsure of how to respond, but eventually, he braced himself to relay the news. Tony and his family were involved in an accident. His words froze time for me, unable to think. Their car was caught in a pileup on the highway. I was so shocked I couldn't move, but my husband's stern pull yourself together spurred me into action. When we arrived at the hospital where the family was taken, it was crowded with other patients from the same accident. Grandma, Grandpa, Hannah, are you all right? Aren't you hurt? Oh, thank goodness. I hugged her tightly as she jumped into my arms crying. Mom and Dad. Hannah managed to choke out through her tears. Feeling as though I had been hit hard, I nearly passed out. My husband quickly supported me. According to the attending doctor, Tony, who was driving, and Linda, who was in the passenger seat, had sustained severe injuries and were beyond help by the time they were brought in. Only Hannah, who was in the back seat, had escaped with just minor scrapes. It's my fault. Because I said I wanted to stay at Grandma's. As Hannah cried and blamed herself, I hugged her tightly again. No, it's not your fault at all. So don't blame yourself. While we paid our respects to the lifeless bodies of Tony and Linda, my husband and I looked at each other. Though unspoken, his eyes conveyed, let's protect Hannah together. Linda, Tony, it's heartbreaking. But don't worry. From now on, we will raise Hannah properly. Always watch over her. We firmly vowed to raise Hannah in place of our son and daughter-in-law. Before we knew it, we were swept up in funeral preparations, and the memorial service had passed in a blink. Hannah, let's go out and play. Even though Emily came over, Hannah stayed holed up in her room, refusing to step outside. Come on, Hannah, Emily came all this way. Why don't you at least show your face? I gently coaxed her, but Hannah kept her head down, staying motionless in the corner of her room. I'm sorry, Emily. Can you come back tomorrow? Okay. Then, Hannah, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Emily said, worrying about Hannah and visiting her daily. Where had the always smiling Hannah gone? Ever since we lost our son and his wife, Hannah had become a child who never smiled. Still, life must go on. I proceeded with the arrangements for Hannah's transfer to a new school. Starting next term, Hannah would attend the same elementary school as Emily. Hannah, why don't you try going to school? I don't want to go. I don't want to. Hannah quickly moved away from me as she spoke. Hannah, let's go to school together. Emily, along with her mother, came to pick Hannah up. I managed to get the sulking Hannah to carry her backpack. Hannah, don't keep moping around, try to smile a little. Even when I made a silly face on purpose, Hannah looked away without smiling. Even ever mind me, remember to cherish your friends. Emily came all this way just for you. Cheer up, Hannah. Emily had come all the way to her room, and finally, Hannah pulled herself slowly. A little at a time is fine, as long as Hannah gets her smile back. With that hope, I watched her head off to school. Before we knew it, a year had passed, and Hannah turned eight. She was attending school every day. Welcome back, was school fun? I always greeted Hannah with a smile. Without a smile, Hannah would immediately retreat to her room. Hannah, if you're free, could you help Grandma out? I thought getting her to move around might clear her mind, so I suggested she help me with weeding the garden. It's tiring and I'll sweat. You do it alone, Grandma. No more weeding then. How about helping me with dinner preparations? I want to watch a TV show, so you do it, Grandma. No matter what I said, Hannah avoided any contact with me. One day, when I served my specialty stew for dinner, Hannah complained, Grandma's dishes are all brown. They don't look nice and they aren't tasty at all, and without touching the stew, 
she ate store-bought hot dog instead. On a school open day, when I took time off work to go to school, Hannah made a face and said, everyone else has their mom or dad, but I only have grandma. I get laughed at, so don't come next time. Another day, I bought a new shirt for Hannah from a local store because the hem of her shirt was frayed, but she threw it on the floor without trying it on once, saying, what's this? It's ugly. I can't wear this, it's embarrassing. It's just a phase. Don't worry about it. My husband tried to comfort me with a wry smile. But I feel it's more than that. I felt that deep down, Hannah might be carrying worries and troubles that we as adults couldn't see. I racked my brain for ways to get Hannah to open up a bit more. Hey Hannah, is there anything you'd like to eat? Grandma will make your favorite. Then make roast beef. It was mom's specialty. I wonder if I can. I've never made it before. How about aqua pasa then? Mom's was delicious. You probably can't make it, right? Hannah deliberately asked for dishes that she knew I was unfamiliar with. Leave it to grandma. I'll make a roast beef so delicious, even your mom in heaven would be surprised. Brimming with unfounded confidence, I quickly jotted down the recipe name Hannah had requested before dashing to the local bookstore with the note in hand. It's done. It looks like roast beef, well, kind of. I followed the recipe book step by step, and despite being unfamiliar with the process, managed to shape it into something presentable. That evening, we invited Emily from next door to try my homemade roast beef. How is it? It's my first time making it, but did it turn out tasty? It's delicious! Grandma Susan, you're a genius! The first to compliment was not Hannah but Emily. Thank you, Emily. How about you, Hannah? Does it suit your taste? It's okay. I still liked mom's roast beef better. Guess it didn't work. All right, next time it's aqua, what was it? Look forward to that. Despite my rueful smile, I bolstered my spirits for the next challenge. Desiring to bring back Hannah's smile, I respected her choices not only in cooking but also in picking out clothes. Hannah, today you pick whatever clothes you like. Grandma will buy you anything you want. To avoid repeating past mistakes, I asked Emily's mom about her favorite boutique and took Hannah there. It looks great on you. So cute. Even as I praised her for the floral dress she tried on, Hannah remained sullen. Then let's go with this. She muttered under her breath. Each fall, Hannah's elementary school holds a Halloween festival. Hannah and her classmates were busy preparing for the event, but when I came home from my part-time job, the atmosphere at home was different. My husband, who had returned earlier, was sitting silently with a troubled look. What's wrong, dear? Well, I'm not sure myself. Sounds of banging on the walls and objects being thrown could be heard from Hannah's room. It's been like this the whole time. When I ask her what's wrong, she just says nothing. What could have happened? Replacing my husband, I then approached Hannah. Hannah, why are you so angry? Did something bad happen at school? Grandma, go away! You smell old, don't come near me! Saying this, Hannah aimed a nearby alarm clock at me. But she hesitated at the last moment and instead threw a teddy bear that was on the floor. Enough already. If you won't tell us what's wrong, Grandma and Grandpa don't know what to do. I told you, it's none of your business. Behaving like this, do you think your parents in heaven would be happy? My husband tried to soothe her gently. Enough. Stop it. Shut up. Shut up. Screaming, Hannah pushed past me and my husband, who were blocking the doorway, and ran out of the house. Hannah, where are you going? As I hurried to follow her, my husband grabbed my arm to stop me. We know where she's going. He said with a gentle smile. That night, I received a call from Emily's mom. Hannah is staying with us tonight. I'm sorry for the trouble. No worries at all. Emily is happy to have her. After hanging up, my husband rubbed my back gently. Time will resolve things. He reassured me as I sighed deeply. Two days passed, and Hannah hadn't returned home. 
I could only deliver her clothes to Emily's house next door. Emily's mom accepted her with a smile, saying, leave it to me, but we couldn't always rely on their kindness forever. I must face Hannah head on. My husband seems to understand this too, but unable to find a good solution, he just sighs when he comes home from work. If only Tony and Linda were here. Why did they have to go before us? With these words, my husband looked sadly at the portraits of our son and his wife. It's the third day since Hannah ran away from home. As I was walking through the shopping mall after finishing my part-time job, I spotted Hannah and Emily. They were walking ahead of me, unaware of my presence. I wanted to call out to Hannah. How relieved I would feel if we could face each other and speak our minds. Yet, as I tried to approach her, my emotions stalled and my feet froze. While I hesitated, the two of them entered a bookstore. I thought about just passing by the bookstore without saying anything, but I stopped in front of the store. No, this is a chance to talk to her. With my emotions still a mess, I stepped into the bookstore. Typical of elementary schoolers nowadays, they headed straight for the cartoon section. As I was hiding nearby, waiting for a chance to speak to Hannah, she suddenly turned around and said, Sorry, Emily. I actually want to look at some cookbooks. Hannah, are you interested in cooking? Yeah, the roast beef grandma made the other day, I want to try making it myself. In front of the cookbook section, Hannah was chatting happily, showing a broad smile that she hadn't shown us recently. Maybe Hannah didn't like the roast beef I made and thinks she can do better. That's how I ended up thinking the worst. Ah. Just thinking about it makes me sick. Hannah was still angry with us. I felt a tightness in my chest. The roast beef Grandma Susan made was really delicious, wasn't it? Emily recalled the taste of my roast beef. Yeah, it was. But you know, the aqua pasa was delicious too. I think the food Grandma makes is the best in the world. At that moment, I doubted my ears. I wish I could have tried the aqua pasa too. Sure. Next time Grandma makes aqua pasa, you should join us, Emily. She hesitated as she was about to invite Emily. Hannah, why don't you come home? Grandma Susan is worried about you. Yeah. I know. I feel bad about it too. But I had a fight with Grandma, and I just don't want to go back yet. You really love your grandma, don't you? I love her. She's my favorite person in the world. Hannah declared loudly enough to echo through the quiet store. But still, I can't tell her I love her. It feels wrong to say it. Why? That's weird. If you love someone, you should just say it. If I get too attached to grandma. If I tell her I love her. If I start thinking of her like my mom then my mom in heaven will feel lonely. I don't think that's true. Besides, Hannah, you were really cool the other day. Emily comforted Hannah by gently rubbing her back. Even when the boys laughed at you because your parents couldn't come to the school festival, you stood up and said, I have my grandma, right? That time, I was so frustrated. I don't have a mom or dad anymore, but grandma and grandpa are always there for me. I couldn't stand them laughing at grandma, from their conversation, I finally understood why Hannah had been so upset. It seems she was laughed at by the boys in her class during the preparations for the Halloween festival because her grandparents, not her parents, would be attending. Since the school open house, the boys had been teasing her about me. Ah. Now I'm getting angry again, those boys. Hannah was not upset with us, but with those boys. The feelings of inferiority for not having parents and only having grandparents were entangled with her thoughts about Linda, causing young Hannah a lot of pain and confusion. Making sure Hannah and Emily didn't notice, I quickly left the bookstore and hurried home. When I got home, my husband had already returned from work. Why are you crying? He noticed something was off as soon as he saw me. I'm not crying. Just something in my eye. I tried to brush it off but quickly shook my head and said, listen, please, then shared with him what I had overheard Hannah say at the bookstore. So, she has been bottling up her feelings. Realizing the situation, 
My husband nodded in agreement. Perhaps we have been too reserved with her. That might be true. We always respected Tony and Linda's parenting roles, feeling it wasn't our place to interfere. But they're not here anymore. We are Hannah's parents now. She has only us. There's no need to hold back with Tony, Linda, or Hannah anymore. That's right. How did we not see such an obvious thing? Accepting all of her, the good and the bad, is our responsibility, isn't it? My husband and I looked each other in the eyes and nodded firmly. All right, if that's settled, we have a busy night ahead. We need to prepare for welcoming Hannah back. That's true. I have to polish our cooking skills, learning from past mistakes. We headed to the supermarket in my husband's car. Do we have everything we need? Are we forgetting anything? Well, we got the chicken thighs and onions, right? Oh no, I forgot. We're out of olive oil. I need to buy some. Let's also grab some potatoes. They'll make the presentation nicer. Normally my husband doesn't get involved in household chores, but this time he actively helped with the shopping. As we finished setting up and waited outside, I saw Hannah returning with Emily. Noticing me, Hannah said, let's go, Emily. I can stay over again tonight, right, deliberately ignoring my presence. Wait, Hannah. No more sleepovers. From tonight, you're sleeping at home. Understood? I said it a bit sternly, and Hannah looked at me, surprised. Still, she tried to follow Emily. Sorry, Hannah. Grandma Susan says so, so I can't let you stay over tonight. Bye, Hannah. See you tomorrow. Emily said and ran off to her house. Hey, wait. Emily. Left without a place to stay, Hannah glared at me with a troubled expression. Don't make that face. Come on, let's get you bathed. After your homework, we'll have dinner. Hannah reluctantly followed me with a sulky face. At dinner, Hannah emerged from her room with a tense expression. Finished your homework? Then, I'll warm up the soup. Unusually, my husband also helped set the table and brought out the dishes. I've been reading the cookbook over and over and tried making roast beef again. How is it? Does it taste better? Try some. Silently, Hannah took a bite of the roast beef. How is it? Has grandma's cooking improved? It's okay. I guess it's normal. Hannah gave a subdued response, but her facial muscles relaxed, and there seemed to be a faint smile around her eyes. Your face says delicious. Come on, admit it. I teased her, and Hannah, laughing a little, looked away, annoying. Don't look. You're acting tough and rebellious, but you're actually happy, aren't you? I smiled and gently stroked the back of Hannah's head as she turned away. What? What are you talking about? That's annoying. Hannah kept pushing me away with her words. I heard everything you and Emily talked about at the bookstore. When I mentioned that, Hannah's ears turned red. What? That's awful, eavesdropping like that. Hannah objected, but I hugged her tightly regardless. She stopped resisting and quietly accepted it. Hannah, your mom always wanted only your happiness, right? Sure, she had her strict moments, but she was far kinder, caring for you more than anyone else in the world. She wouldn't feel lonely if you lean on me. Rather, holding back your feelings and pretending to be troubled would hurt her more. No. It's my fault mom and dad. I said I wanted to live with grandma, and then that happened. Maybe it's because I was a bad kid that I can't see mom anymore. That's not true, Hannah. Your mom is still watching over you. It would make her happy to see you smiling brightly every day. I realized Hannah was clinging tightly to me with all her strength. Grandma! Stay with me always! Hannah pleaded through her tears. I will, Hannah. Grandpa and I will always be right here. You're not alone. Hannah turned her tear-streaked face towards me. After mom and dad were gone, I felt so lonely. I really wanted to lean on you and grandpa because I love you both so much. But I thought if I did, mom in heaven would feel lonely, so I couldn't let myself be pampered by you. You are such a kind-hearted girl. 
As I stroked Hannah's head, I glanced sideways and saw my husband silently crying. From that day on, we stopped merely indulging Hannah. Hey, Hannah, it's morning. How long are you going to sleep? Get up and have breakfast. Ugh, let me sleep a little longer. Just five more minutes. No, you can't. Emily will be here soon. Come on, get up and wash your face. Don't talk like mom. Hannah grumbled but got out of bed and headed to the bathroom. Hannah, eat your carrots too. My husband noticed Hannah had pushed the carrots to the edge of her plate and chided her. No. I hate carrots. These carrots are exceptional. Grandma's seasoning is superb. Saying that, my husband ate the carrots with relish. Come on, Hannah. They're delicious, give them a try. I encouraged her with a smile, and Hannah grimaced but took a bite. How is it? Tasty? It's okay, just normal. Yet, Hannah's expression seemed to betray a slight smile. Hannah! Emily's voice could be heard at the entrance. Just a minute! Remembering the time, Hannah hurried to get ready. Geez! If Grandma had woken me up earlier! I did wake you. You just wouldn't get up. Calm down, you too. Regardless, we had become a family that could speak openly about our feelings without any reservations. Grandma, after the festival, let's make mac and cheese together. All right, we will. Grandpa and I will definitely come to see the festival. I'm off then. With that, Hannah dashed out energetically. Linda, Tony, watch as she grows. The portraits of our son and his wife seemed to watch over us, smiling gently.